Day three of surge testing begins later this morning at four locations across Oahu. Now, with more testing underway, could we expect to see the number of new cases skyrocket? Joining us this morning with more is Lieutenant Governor and the state's COVID-19 liaison, Dr. Josh Green. Good morning, Doc. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. Worried about people, but I'm okay. Now, first off, what is the goal of surge testing and how does it help flatten the curve? Surge testing gives us a broader window into the virus. Uh, Surgeon General, who's a, quite a good friend, Dr. Adams, brought us 60,000 tests. We have these tests to spread out over two weeks, 12 working days, 5,000 tests a day. It means that we'll be able to get a glimpse into some communities that were harder to reach, like the Pacific Islander community. We can do a lot of extra testing for first responders, of course, the community at large. And by getting this extra data, we'll be able to pinpoint where we have to have extra health care resources. Now, what kind of numbers of daily new cases can we expect to see? Because yesterday's positivity rate was 12%. Well, when these test results start coming in, it's going to be three days out each time. We'll be able to reflect on uh, much higher numbers, I'm sure. Uh, that 5,000 cohort will each time not be testing at 10% positive like we've been in the, in the population that's been sick. But we'll probably add 50 or 100 uh, caught cases per time. It's a little bit difficult to know for sure because we're testing mostly asymptomatic people. It will, it will show us a broader picture, but we'll follow the positivity rate. So we'll know what our overall rate is, and that's the most important thing. As the rate comes down, we know we're safer. If the positivity rate is over 10%, my understanding is that we're considered in the red. What would be the appropriate percentage positivity rate to get things back open again? Uh, under 5%. So the way the Surgeon General and I described it was under 5% is in the green, 5 to 10% is in the yellow, essentially, and over 10% is in the red. It's essentially why we're in a stay-at-home position right now. The rate was so high and the spread was so likely that we can't let this thing fly out of control even further. Now, you've been talking with the U.S. Surgeon General, Dr. Jerome Adams, who's in town. What have you learned from him? I learned a lot of things. One thing I learned is people are actually surviving way better now. The rate of the mortality rate has dropped an order of magnitude, like a lot because now we have remdesivir early, we get steroids into people early. The, the, uh, the plasma treatment helps a little bit. It hasn't been proven to help a lot. But he showed me those numbers. That was very refreshing, and we have more than adequate remdesivir, so I want to reassure, reassure our people. What else did Jerome say? Well, like, you know, Washington's political. He didn't want to get into a lot of that stuff. It was kind of ironic because the days that he was here with 60,000 tests were the same days that the FDA announced that they were going to test fewer that's just fewer people who were uh, asymptomatic. But the irony of that was uh, Dr. Fauci was not in the room when they made that decision. He was out getting his uh, vocal cord worked on, it got a benign politic taken off. So it was quite an interesting experience with him, but mostly he said that if we knock these numbers down, which we knew back down under 5%, we'll be A-OK. -okay. And he reassured me that the lockdown was probably the appropriate thing to do. And what's the best piece of advice that he's shared with you? Best piece of advice from the Surgeon General, boy, I, I think it's that you wear masks religiously, that you do not uh, let down your guard whatsoever, and that he, he was very much, uh, he was in line with what our thinking has been, which is a shorter, more intense lockdown to knock the virus out and into manageable numbers is far better than letting it drift slowly for many months. And he also was very cognizant of our hospital impact. He said we had to get these numbers down. We took him and toured both uh, Hawaii Pacific Health and Queens. Took, I took Dr. Adams to the intensive care units with our Queens leadership, where he saw many, many patients that were on ventilators. And it really kind of opened his eyes wide to what we were facing. Are those hospitals going to see the increase in patients because of these high numbers? And what is the timetable? You usually say like a two-week lag? Yeah, two, two to three weeks. So it's usually right in between two and three weeks we see a surge. And we have 5,140 active cases, 5,140 as of today or last, last evening. That means that in the two to three week period after all of these active cases have settled in, we will see somewhere between an 8 and 11 percent bump in our hospitalizations from that group. So 450 to 600 patients will go into hospital. We right now, as of yesterday, had 286 people in the hospital total with COVID. So imagine adding 500 to our system. Very, very 
large impact. Uh, that's what we're going to see. So we should brace ourselves for that. And this is the absolute most important time to get our numbers down so that we don't have a persistent uh, surge at the hospital. All right, there you have it, Lieutenant Governor Dr. Josh Green. And of course, he will be sticking around to answer your Facebook questions in just a bit.